Welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. My guests this evening are Jason Berkler and Maria Phillips from Kids of American Heroes. Guys, welcome. How are you tonight? Doing fantastic. And yourself? I am good. I am good. How are you, Great, Jason? Great, Pete. Great, thanks. Good. So, who is Maria Phillips and why did she get started with this organization? I'm Maria Phillips. I know you're Maria Phillips, <laughs> but for, the, for those of us that don't know who Maria is, who is she and why did she get involved with this organization? Well, this was a brainchild that came to me from my own experiences with my father, who okay. served in World War II at the 401st Bombardier Group. He okay. flew from England over Germany. And when he came home, life was never the same for him. So although he, you know, he went to school on the GI Bill and became a doctor, right. he still had, in those days, what we called shell shock. Mm -hmm which translates today into PTSD. Yeah. And there are so many children who are currently affected by parents who have traumatic brain injury or, right. and or PTSD mm -hmm. that we decided to bring this organization to fruition to try to help the children, the kids of America's heroes. Now, how, how, long, is, how long has the brainchild of the organization been running around in, in, in your head? About a year. Yeah. All right. And J Jason, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. How did you get involved Thanks. with the organization? And it was kind of it's kind of fortuitous. Right. Um, I, I'm a 26-year Navy veteran. Right. Um, I ended up meeting Maria um, at Quinnipiac University, mm -hmm. and we were doing a veterans job fair in Hamden at the Civic Center, which is kind of it's kind of what started this. We started uh, we had a table actually next to each other, so we okay. started talking about the idea. And um, it kind of resonated with me because um, Maria, as a child of a veteran, saw the, the moves and saw you know the family upheaval that's associated with that. I, and I have two daughters, and uh, I know from experience, I, I saw it from the parents' perspective of some of the agita that creates of being in the military, uh, moving. Uh, I mean, we can get into this. Uh, I'm sure you have it in your question bank, Pete. But sure. um, uh, I served in the Navy as an aviator, uh, but I did do uh, 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 multiple deployments, and then I was embedded with the Army in Afghanistan. So you see, see it from kind of a ground uh, side with how it affected armies, uh, Army soldiers, uh, Marines, and the folks on the ground as well. Now, how, I'm, I'm assuming it was a, wasn't any fun over overseas when you were there. No, it's it's um, there's there's a sense of camaraderie right. while you're deployed with the, with those entities. But uh, you know, with technology the way it was um, in 2008 yep. in Afghanistan, sure. I was able to talk to my family on a on a pretty regular basis. Back in the mid 90s, early 90s, when I'm on an mm -hmm. aircraft carrier, yeah. um, you know, back to postal service exactly. mail and uh, dated mail, and it's not like that anymore. No, so that there is not. there is some good continuity there, but it still doesn't change the fact that, uh, uh, you know, parents are, are deployed and um, all the stuff that it creates at home. Now, can you please explain what the organization is? Well, we already covered what it is and how it got started, but maybe get into a little bit more in depth of what you guys, what you guys are envisioning to do. Absolutely. Our, our vision is to create a civilian awareness of the unique struggles and challenges that over two million children in this country are suffering from. And those children are the sons and daughters of the United States military, okay. deployed National Guard and reservists. Okay. And since the unprecedented um, amount of our all-volunteer force going mm -hmm. in, 
the largest it's been since the Vietnam era, which Jason can elaborate on. Okay. There are so many children, like I said, two million that are school-aged. There are four million if you take under school age, pre-K and under, going all the way up from birth mm -hmm. to 25, that need our help, need our assistance. And what we plan to do is yeah. create an awareness to the civilian population that this is an issue, number right. one. And number two, provide resources to build resilience throughout schools, organizations, and communities. Okay. And Jason, do you want yeah, to elaborate? Yeah, sure do. Um, sure. I mean, in World War II, after World War II, uh, one in every eight person had served in the U.S. military. And nowadays, um, it's one in 24 and wow. has served, not currently serving, right. but has, has served, has served. So as the population Correct. grows. And with the ending of the draft in 1973, yeah. we've seen kind of a, a disjoint between our all-volunteer force and its populate, populace that it served okay. to protect. Okay. So um, what Maria was getting at is like schools, um, administrators, the general populace uh, has, has become maybe Apathetic may be too strong a word. I just think uh, there's a lack of knowledge there on what families go through because mm -hmm. they're not connected with the military like they were back in the 1940s, 1950s through the Vietnam era. It's much different now that there's no draft and all volunteer force. So right. I think it's imperative uh, that COA kind of touches that base of not a lot of focus is on the military member coming back, especially the neuropsychological issues associated with that member based on traumatic brain injury, PTSD, physical and mental um, disabilities based on combat. Mm -hmm. or, uh, um, but there's some of that that translate to the children. There is definitely the, the pre-deployment, deployment, post-deployment post issues yeah. that, that, that it creates uh, within the family, not just with the spouse, but you know, it really affects the children. The children are, I think the viewers will know, um, pick up on what going on in the household and mm -hmm. they know depending on what age they are obviously and, exactly. and create some create some issues not just in the household but that translate over into the schools I was gonna say it's good I was gonna say it's got to be tough to have a parent deployed for right because you don't know how long so that and that ties directly to you know these reduced numbers of our of our military mm -hmm. um, the, with having two wars going on, right. uh, Afghanistan and Iraq since 2001, the end right. of 2001, the, the military has been utilizing its reserve force. It's yeah. been utilizing its National Guard. Um, and you know the active duty force is co-located around large military installations for okay. the most part, right? So there is a little right. bit more care and feeding of the families there, there's more available. But with that large, reserve force, you may have a sailor from a reservist who works at Midas, who right. is actually a diesel mechanic and now deploys right. um, with the Navy, or is doing an individual augmentee that the Army uses for that expertise, okay. and now is deployed away from their family and goes back home with, without that support around them. Same with, similar with National Guard, um, a lot of this, the units use pieces and parts of National Guard units mm -hmm. uh, and their members may not take a whole unit and they deploy overseas and may not have that support group uh, that, a, that an active duty force has. Exactly. Yeah. There are 14,000 school districts in the country. Yep. Of those 14,000 school districts, every school district has a military connected student in it. Every wow. single school. Now, sadly, there's yes. no way to identify who these children are. So we don't know and there's no ability to do a longitudinal study on whether or not these children are getting education properly throughout their entire 12 years of schooling right because they're just amongst the regular population exactly exactly yeah and i've witnessed some of that um, from my own children yeah. um be, uh, going i was stationed in new orleans uh, department of defense school my daughter went uh, at, at the base there, and um, although I wasn't deployed, there was children there. This was third grade. Uh, parents were deployed, and there were, there were some issues with with those children and the interaction. Um, I was I was actually friends with the principal and the vice principal of the school, and they you know anecdotally would tell me stories of the, what was going on there, and I witnessed some of it with with my own daughter. Uh, and then when I was deployed, uh, my my oldest teenage daughter, similar thing, some acting out, some discipline issues. Right. Um, 
some um, withdrawal, you know, being mm -hmm. withdrawn, um, some interaction, some friction between uh, my wife and my daughter as well. Uh, and I know some of that's normal, but mm -hmm. um, it was, it was uh, she didn't have that benefit of having both parents there. Exactly. And this is exacerbated if there's a single parent. Um, some of the issues I saw that yeah. I talked about about in New Orleans, they were grandparents raising the kids because of a single parent and just caused even more friction based on, based on uh, the not, uh, uh, not a parent being around. Do you have something you would like to add there, madam? <laughs> it's Coa's mission to right. jump in and save and help the children, okay. the kids of America's heroes. Right. Now, as far as, Jason, when you were overseas, you said, you said it was tough, basically, which is understandable, being married, having a family, and I don't know, I, I, guess, I guess, what can people do to try to yeah. alleviate, the, alleviate the pressure or the stress that people, someone is overseas? Yeah, and I think, you know, what, what Co is looking to do, um, is one of the things is looking mm -hmm. to do, as Maria was touching on as well, is one is to educate, right? right. And, I, and, and the Department of Defense schools have, have, um, have, have dealt with this. And mm -hmm. I think that's the place where we've started, of gathering information on how they work with children of deployed uh, individuals, okay. and then we got to translate that into educating the public schools, the larger public schools mm -hmm. where there's a concentration of uh, deployed individuals, and um, uh, donations would be able to would greatly help yeah. that All right. on being able to support those counselors that have. The military installations have, uh, in the Navy's case, it's called fleet and family services, right? right. So individuals can go there, uh, parents could go there to send their children and get counseling services based mm -hmm. on the knowledge of deployed parents and right. be focused on the, those issues. Um, even if they're in a public school out in the local town off base, mm -hmm. m most bases don't have military schools. No. The overseas schools do. Some in the states, like in New Orleans, have a yep. Department of Defense school. Um, but most don't. So you live out in the community, you, uh, and, and those communities generally embrace the students. But the places that are um, outside of those uh, comfort zones, mm -hmm. that's, that's the places they've, the military has seen issues. The families have seen issues with children that, that uh, don't get the support, uh, uh, don't get the recognition of, hey, this is based on X, Y, and Z of the, of the parent being deployed or the parent coming home mm -hmm. with um, depression, anxiety, and that translates, uh, you know, their marital friction right. uh, when, they get, when they get back. And, exactly. and it, it, it may be some abuse issues in there as well that, right. that, that obviously occurs. So um, we're looking to educate the schools uh, on how to um, work with that, that niche. Okay. Maria, do you have anything you'd like to add? I think Jason said everything you said, very well. All right. Well, we're about to go into a break. But before we do, let's mention a, the website where people can get more information and an email address. Of course. All right. K mm -hmm. O. Yep. Jason, go for it. <laughs> Kilo Oscar Alpha Hotel. K O A H. Yep. <laughs> uh, At unitedcp.org. Okay. And we will talk about what type of information is on the website during the next segment. Would you guys mind sticking around? Absolutely. All Love right. to. <laughs> we'll be right back. Thanks. <laughs> Spend 15 minutes watching online videos like this one. 
brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. And welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm your host sitting here with Jason Burke and Maria Phillips. Guys, welcome back. Thanks. Next. <laughs> no problem. So, Jason, we were talking right before the break, and you were telling some stories about having a parent deployed in overseas and the amount of stress and yeah. the non-fun non, non of that being stressful on a family. I was wondering if we can maybe talk about that yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, um, there's, there's a couple areas there. Um, I recently, I, I live in Rhode Island. Okay. And uh, um, uh, the naval base in Newport mm -hmm. sure. is uh, relatively close to where I live. And I had a, a, a fellow Navy officer that I used to work with got orders there. So he was uh, deployed, hasn't been back yet, so his family came to look at certain school districts there. And they had two children, okay. uh, an older daughter, uh, about 12, and a son who's 10. And uh, went to one school district, kind of a wealthier school district. That's where they're looking the house. They, they you know, he's a, a, a commander in the Navy, so makes pretty good money. All right, okay, sure. Uh, right? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, in, in military terms, it's right, pretty good exactly. money. And looking at a home to buy and looking at the school districts to see. Mm -hmm. And one of the administrators, uh, I don't think meant to be callous, but when she had found out that the family was military, told them they'd probably be better off living somewhere closer to the base and not in this town. So it really, uh, with really? the kids standing there, so it really, <laughs> you know, that affects the kids. It, it's, it's, it's not really a simple story, but, uh, and, and I don't necessarily think she meant to be right. callous, but um, I just think it was a lack of knowledge of that, hey, this is, this, this would be a great addition to your school here. Right. It, it diversifies your school with the life experiences that these kids have had. And, uh, and instead they left kind of depressed and upset and apparently aren't gonna buy a house there in that community. So I'm glad they're living in my neighborhood. They there bought you a house. go. Uh, the school district was welcoming. So that's, that's one story. Okay. Uh, there's others of, you know, uh, we talked about Algida and, yep. and I can tell you from experience of getting ready Please. to deploy Please. with days, you count the days down, you don't want to, but then you know you can't sleep, the kids can't sleep, they know you're leaving in two days. Right. Uh, in my, one of my deployments, I, um, I left and then it got canceled, the weather was bad so we couldn't get out to the ship, yep. uh, fly out to the ship, it was very bad uh, weather, so it slid a day. So you've already ready to say your goodbyes. You kind of say your goodbyes to the kids. You go into the squadron, and then now you're like, hey, we're going to go tomorrow. So now, hey, I'm back home again, okay. but I'm leaving tomorrow. And I, you know, it sounds pretty simple, but it, right, it's pretty it's brutal not. to do that and go put the kids through that. And then a, another deployment where uh, my family was on vac We were on vacation with my parents and my brothers and their family, and I had to leave two days early. Um, to drive to Fort Bragg to deploy, yep. uh, and my family got to stay on vacation. So I was upset. They got to stay. Yeah, they exactly. got to stay at Lake Placid another couple of days. Oh man! But it was it was pretty brutal saying bye to everybody. Yeah. You know, and uh, and having to leave my kids. Um, yeah. And and knowing that my kids were were feeling pretty horrible uh, to do that and uh, have to go through that. And it happens every day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Navy's deployed. They've been deployed since 1775. Uh, Army's been uh, out of garrison, meaning they've been deployed since late 2001, early 2002. Okay. Um, all the other services have been um, taking, uh, uh, supporting the mm -hmm. Army in its mission. They have a, uh, the military has individual augmentees. Mm -hmm. And what that is, if there's gaps or certain needs that the Army can't fill uh, overseas, that they'll look at the other services that have unique qualities that support those billets. And they will, even sometimes by name, mm -hmm. pull people within maybe two weeks notice, 30 days notice. And you may be in a shore duty or somewhere where you think you're okay and not to deploy. And then you could be a National it Guard happens. reservist and you get pulled and you're going overseas and trying to explain that to your kids. Uh, and gone for six months to a year. Wow. Um, really, is, can be no more softball games for a while yeah, or, no or any of the sporting events or birthdays and stuff. No so kidding. it's pretty brutal. It 
seems it. You know what? There's what? there's a, a lot of people who will thank a military member, veteran, and say, you know, thank you for your service. Right. But and wave a flag when they come home, and maybe have a, a hooray on Memorial Day or, yeah. or or on Veterans Day. Right. But who's thanking the kids for letting their parents? Go. Exactly. Who's doing anything for these children? Right. And Kids of America's Heroes is has is going to reach out to the schools okay. where there is a lack of understanding to the military culture, mm -hmm. and try to assist and and help with um, creating empathy through counselors and teachers mm -hmm. for the children. Yeah, I mean, there's many entities uh, that support the the, the warrior. Coming okay. home, yep. and um, they're fantastic. But there, there are a lot, there are a lot out there, and that's great. I, that, that is great, but not a whole lot out there that support the kids. No, uh, and and some of the some of the issues they deal with, as far as the psychological issues, the the grief. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I call it anticipatory grief, uh, <laughs> especially if someone's going into a combat area. Kids, mm -hmm. they're not stupid, right? They no, know if somebody's sure. in the Army, Marine Corps. You're going uh, somewhere. You're going somewhere, and uh, it's somewhere probably you wouldn't pay to go on vacation. No. And uh, so it, it causes that imp that anticipatory great grief can can wear on you, and then you add the, add the friction. There's sense of loss. Yeah. There's the anticipatory grief, and then having a parent injured or die is reality for these children. Yeah. It's it's the what they face on a day to day basis while their parent is deployed, yeah. and what we don't understand um, yes. is their for you and I, who were not military people, right. for when my father served, his mission was to fly so many times over Germany, drop yeah. so many bombs, and that was it. Right. Come home. People today are deployed, and their deployments are long durations of time. Mm -hmm. They come home, and they're turned around and sent back out, and then sent out again. So it's not a one time you go no. over and, and deployment is until the job is done. It's right. not you're gone for three months, you're gone for six months. It's until your job is done. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, we, you know, young families, uh, mm -hmm. there are multiple deployments. You could be in an army unit three years and have done two deployments, you know, a year in between, you know, called turnaround time. Mm -hmm. uh, they're supposed to get a certain amount of turnaround time in between. And it, that occurs often, but often other times it, does not, um, and uh, um, lost my train of thought there for a second. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. I was I was actually I was actually going to ask as far as the website goes, is what types of information can people find on the website? Are you looking for donations? Are we, we looking, are looking for, for donations, and we're looking for volunteers? I, and you could become a hero to the Kids of America's Hero. Businesses can sponsor us as well. Really. Yes, now, we could do walkathons and, and galas and anything that you, your school or your organization or your business can mm -hmm. come up with. Okay. We'll help organize it so that way we'll make it nice and easy. Right. It's all there on the website. It is, okay. Yeah. Absolutely. And even uh, in memoriam, it's to somebody who's was served in the military, you know, on their, on their behalf. Okay. Mm -hmm. or, so we'll uh, take donations in memory. A memory. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> in memoriam. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Jason, I was wondering, maybe we can, one of the questions that just popped in my mind was, I know we talked about schooling if you're in like regular school, is, can, is there a difference of being in like a regular school as compared to being a, in an on-base school? Um, there is. I mean, the curriculum may not be right. diff much different, but it's op right. it's it's there. It's designed for the the children that live on that base or that okay. installation, sure. and then in the local community. In this case, um, it was a naval air station in Bell Chase, which is. Um, really on the outskirts of New Orleans. Okay. And the schools in that, the, the Navy saw fit. It's a, it's a reserve base, but it's a large naval air station um, and reserve base, uh, a, actually a joint reserve base, meaning that other services have entities on that base, all okay. Army, Navy, um, Marines, okay. uh, some Air Force, and it may have a Coast Guard, it do, actually does have a Coast Guard station relatively close by. Oh, it does? So the students, and even if uh, the kids that live in the local area are mm -hmm. able to go to that school. I lived about 10 miles away, and the bus would meet at the base, um, a, a separate base, and then yep. she would bus out to that school. Okay. But there, the, 
it, and it goes on this hierarchy. So if you're on active duty, mm -hmm. your kids have priority. And then if right. you're a reservist, then that's the next step. If you're a Department of Defense employee, your children can go there. And then it, it works this way. Gotcha. You're a contractor, your children can go there. And then there's some kids that were just from local Bell Chase area outside of New Orleans that yeah. were, if there were openings in the classroom, the, the, that they got the, the edict openings. was to fill the classrooms and right. then through that hierarchy. Um, so, and if I may, the, go ahead. Um, there are less than eight percent of um, military connected students who attend a DoD EA school. Really, and that number being that small, um, as Jason said, it's open to a lot of people, including the DoD workers. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, in regards to education, the DoD is starting to shut down because of budgets. Yeah, starting to shut down the base schools in the United States. Okay. They're gonna keep them overseas, yeah. but not here. Yeah. Um, however, we do have Common Core. Common Core, which you think is a wonderful thing because it should be um, a student coming from uh, down in Tennessee, coming up to Connecticut or Rhode Island, would be able to transfer everything. Right. But unfortunately with Common Core, school is taught in different cycles. So Algebra 1 may have lessons 1 through 12 being taught to a group and then 13 through 25, 20, being yeah. taught to somebody else. When that child transfers, those courses may be switched around so the child will not catch up. Yeah. So there are issues Experience. within Common Core mm -hmm. and a child transferring, which they have to do because their parents are being moved around the country. Right. So. And there's some, there's some, the good parts of the DOD school are that there's some kids in common life experiences, right? Yep. So there's some, there's some uh, common backgrounds there and they're probably a, there's a good turnover rate of, inf of students that are, their parents are rotating in on, on orders and duty there. Where uh, in the civilian schools, um, you know, the acceptance might be more difficult for a student based on, hey, I just left my friends, now I gotta try and make new friends. Right. And that, that may be difficult, if, especially if this, the child is dealing as an introvert or dealing with some, some issues. Uh, trying to acclimate uh, and then trying to find friends and um, being a kid, being exactly. a kid can be hard. Well, um, we're, we're about to say goodnight, but before we do, I want to thank you guys for coming on with me. Hopefully we'll have you on again soon. I would love to. Oh, we have yeah, so I much can more talk, to tell you. I can talk all night. So all right. As you can yeah. tell, I won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, goodnight. Goodnight. Thanks.